Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be playing with a layering stencil from Hero Arts and deco foil with Transfer Gel Duo from Thermoweb. I'm really excited about this. I've had this project in mind for quite some time now and I'm finally getting a chance to do it and I hope that it works out because I think the results are going to be amazing. We're going to actually use the foils with the layering stencil and get layered foils, which is going to, I think, look amazing. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to move my Transfer Gel Duo off to the side. We're going to use Versifying Claire in Shady Lane for our base layer of foliage. Um, I could use another green foil, but I really want the flowers to pop more than the foliage and I don't want them to all be the same amount of shiny so I figured that starting off with a base layer of Shady Lane will work really well with our green foil which happens to be called Spring Green very appropriate for this time of year the other foils that I have are Pink Melon and Pink Quartz all beautiful colors I love playing with these foils they're so much fun the stencil that we're going to be using again it's from Hero Arts it is called Color Layering Peonies Bunch Stencil. I'm a huge fan of peonies. I, I love them. I have some in my garden. And I'm excited to, to foil some. Should be really cool. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four stencils. So this is the stencil that we're going to start with because, again, I want to use Shady Lane for my base layer of the foliage. So we're going to start there. What I have is my five by seven gel press plates. You can use, um, I know Waffle Flower has, a, I always forget the name because I don't have one, that kind of tacky, it's like a clear stamp, but it's solid. They have the, a grip mat, it's a grip mat. They have that, the Altenew stamp wheel has a mat that you can use, but I use my gel plate. So I'm gonna just put this on here. No, I'm not, I'm gonna put my cardstock on here first. Way to go, Al. Let's see, we want this to be, so this is cut to four by five and a quarter. I wanna grab my flowers too, just to make sure that they're going to fit properly. Let me grab one of the layers of the flowers. We'll use this solid layer because obviously I don't want it to go past the card. Yep, that's what we need to do, we need to fix that. So it's tricky to see on camera, but I can see the leaf under here. See that? If the foliage comes off a little bit, I'm okay with that, but I don't want to lose the flowers. So I think that that is pretty good. Again, I'm sorry that you can't see that on the camera. I'm gonna put this down here. I'm lining this up with the bottom of my plate and then I'm gonna push down and remove this layer. All right, that looks good. You see, this will just kind of grip it in place for us. Now, I've got my Shady Lane, open this up, and I keep I keep cosmetic sponges for each color of my VersaFine Claire's, and I just put them in a little baggie. Um, these were upcycled or recycled from the sequence from Doodle's Paper Playground. So, I emptied the packs into my sequin container and now I just use the baggies for this. And I just label each one so that I don't mix up the colors. And I just find that this is a really good way to apply these inks in particular. You can use blending brushes if you want to, but these are a pigment ink. So I don't want to use them on the brushes that I use for my dye based inks because then the, the pigment will get into the dye and I just don't want to deal with any of that. And then I don't have enough um, Tim Holtz mini ink blending tools to for the amount of VersaFine Claire's that I have. And these just work fine. Look at how easily this is spreading across this paper. And I'm using Accent Opaque 110 pound. And just applying this. And then I'll heat set it before we move on to the next step. I'm not gonna apply embossing powder or anything like that. I just wanna heat set it because again, it is a pigment. And while this particular ink is formulated to not smear, I don't wanna take any chances because we are gonna be using the Transfer Gel Duo on top of this. 
There we go. That looks good. And I'm going to peel this up, but I'm going to leave my cardstock in place. Just like that. And a little bit of isopropyl alcohol will clean this stencil off. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, stencil is nice and clean. If you don't like the smell of isopropyl alcohol, I'm not sure of anybody that does like the smell. Um, the Artist Spree Multi-Purpose Cleaner also cleans VersaFine and Clear Ink really well. So now what I'm going to do is carefully, carefully heat set this. I don't want to move this off of my plate because I want to make sure that I put the, stent the next stencil on top in the right space. So I'm going to carefully heat this up with my heat tool. Probably a blow dryer would be better or the heat it tool from Ranger, but I don't have any of that. Um, I'm not going to drag my blow dryer up here. So I'm going to just carefully heat this up really quick just so that it sets. So I was kind of waffling back and forth as to which layer I wanted to do next, but ultimately I decided I'm going to go with the flowers, the, the base part of the flowers next. It perhaps might not be the best choice, but I'm looking at it as this is going to be the next most solid layer. I'm going to apply a thin coat of my trans transfer gel duo here, and then we'll build up the smaller layers after that. And I just, I don't know, in my head, it seems like it might work a little bit better to do it this way. We'll see what happens. Also, just in case I didn't heat set this ink enough, it allows it some time to dry. So the reason that I'm using the Shady Lane VersaFine Claire as opposed to something that's uh, dye-based is because a lot of times dye-based inks are water reactive and this is a water-based uh, medium so I think it is acrylic polymer yeah I would think that it's more water-based than anything else um, and I don't want this to make my ink react so this isn't going to make the VersaFine Claire react so that's why I chose that so what we're going to do now is we're going to scoop out some of this ver uh, transfer gel duo I can't speak you guys <laughs> I'm trying and if you notice I'm using the back of the palette knife here you don't want to scoop this way because then it's going to be really hard to apply your paste we're going to do it to the back of there and then apply it and we're going to get a nice thin coat as best as we can across this whole panel where the holes are some excess there and you can use a bigger palette knife if you want to. I have a large scraper that I sometimes use, but I don't really think that it's necessary today. And I just want a thin layer. It's looking pretty good. I need to fix this one a bit. Let me lift this up so that you can see. See that? Got a little bit of a texture going here, but we might be okay. That's better. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to peel this up and quickly wash off my stencil and my palette knife because I don't want this to stay on here and dry because it's going to make it really sticky. And we're going to, meanwhile, allow this to dry off to the side. I'm going to leave everything together here, let it dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, this is nice and dry, but tacky. So I don't really think that you can tell, but can you hear that? I mean, you might hear the whirring. My laminator is right here. I'll pull that into screen in a moment, but I filmed another video while I let this set up. And what's cool about leaving this on the gel plate is that there's no warping. I don't often get a lot of warping when I use the, um, the transfer gel duo. Of course, depending on how much I'm putting on a panel. If it's on the entire panel, then yeah, you're gonna get some warping as it dries, but leaving it on the gel plate really prevented that from happening. So I'm gonna carefully peel this off. Move this off to the side, we'll use this again later. And now I'm going to cut down my pink quartz deco foil. We've got some small pieces in here already. Perhaps, yeah. I'm gonna lay this on top because I don't want it to stick yet, just so that I can cut this down. Using my scissors from Uniquely Creative, they match this project really nicely. All right, I'm gonna move this off to the side too. 
And now we are going to make our little sandwich. I'm going to put this on top, just like that. And then I've got, you know, Deco Foil has, uh, excuse me, ThermoWeb has paper that you can use to run through your laminator. But this is actually the siliconized protective paper from Artispree, and that's what I really like to use. I've got a ton of it anyway. So I use it a few times until it, start, until it starts to turn a little brown, and then I wind up grabbing a new piece. So this is my ridiculously old laminator. It's been heating up for a while. You can see the green light is lit, and now I'm gonna run this through. Whatever laminator you've got, use that. I see no reason to get a new one because this one is still working just fine. I hope I didn't jinx myself, but we're gonna just run this through and take a look at what we come up with. I love doing the peel and reveal. When you peel that foil away and you see what you've got underneath, it's so much fun. Um, this is not gonna be the most impressive part because we've only got one layer of ink down and one layer of foil down, but as we build up those layers, it's gonna be more and more impressive each time we run this through. Okay. You can run this through a second time. In fact, I think I'm going to do that and I'll do that off camera. I ran that through a second time and moved the laminator off to the side and now we can see what we've got. Oh, it's so cool already. Look at it. It's awesome. Okay, now we're going to take the next stencil. I think we're going to use the one for the leaves next and apply another layer of the Transfer Gel Duo. All right, I've got my gel press plate back on screen, and now we're going to lay this down like so. And based on what is already here, we can figure out where this stencil is going to go. Seems like I don't have this backwards. Seems like it might actually overlap some of the pink. Let me take a look at the picture on the packaging to make sure that's correct. So there is a bit of overlap. What they have here is that you start off with the big floral and you work your way through to the foliage. So there is going to be a bit of overlap here and there, and that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't looking at this incorrectly. So now we're going to take our Transfer Gel Duo again. Once again, load the back of the palette knife instead of the front. This way it's easier to apply your paste. Or your gel, rather. And then we're going to just get this through here. Not a whole lot of spaces on this that we need to fill. Smooth that out, get a little bit more. And there we go, okay. Put the excess back into your jar. This stuff does get very sticky when it dries, so you might wanna wipe off the edge, probably not with your finger, but you know, that's just what I do. You can get like a wet paper towel or a baby wipe just to make it so that it doesn't seal this shut on you. And now we'll peel this away. Again, we've gotta wash this quickly. If you wanna scrape up this excess and get it back in to the container, you can. But now I'm gonna leave this again, let it dry, and then we'll move on to the next foil. We are back a couple of hours later, and you can see that the paste is nice and clear. It's got a little bit of a milky look to it, but overall it's clear, and that means it's ready to go. So we are going to once again peel this off of my gel press plates, leave that off to the side for now. I've got my siliconized protective paper here again, and now we're going to use our spring green foil my purple cows laminating machine is all heated up it's off to the side i'll pull it into view in a moment and i'm going to just try to find a piece of foil to use for this just 
might be okay. Look at that. That works. And my scissor. This is such a nice shade of green. It's such a pretty color. Although none of the deco foil colors are disappointing. Let's be real. <laughs> okay. I'm going to lay this on here like that. Close that over. Scoochie it into the crease a bit more. Let me grab my laminator. And we're going to run this through. This is the second time that I'm running it through now. Just about ready to come out. And move this off to the side, turn it off, and let's see what we've got. All right, take a look. It actually hid quite a bit more of the inking than I had thought it would, but you can still see some of it. It doesn't matter to me. It's totally fine. It's beautiful. I think it's really cool. This is going to be a tricky one to photograph, I'll say that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our last layer of the stencil. Okay. Put this on here again. I really like that it's helping to prevent the paper from curling up. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now we've got our transfer gel duo again, loading up the back of the palette knife. And now we're just going to apply the paste for our final time. So you might be wondering why it's called transfer gel duo. And I hadn't mentioned this earlier, but you do not have to use a laminator for this. You can use your die cut machine. It doesn't require heat like one of the other, or at least one of the other, there might be two, um, of the Thermaweb transfer gels. Um, the Blanco, I believe you must use heat, but this one you don't. You can just run it through your die cut machine. I prefer the laminating technique. I find that it works a little bit better. Um, my die cut machine tends to squish out the dried gel and I feel like I don't get as crisp of an image anymore but you can do it however you like I personally just like to use my laminator because it's really the only time I use it so that's our final layer we're gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and do our last layer of foil it is now the next day and you can see that that gel has dried nice and clear and we are ready to add our final layer of foil on top. So again, we're peeling this away. And I've got my pink melon deco foil. My laminating machine has heated up alongside me. Piece of foil here. And whatever scraps you have left, don't throw them out. You can use them on other things. If you like to play with alcohol ink, for example, which is something that I like to do, if you find that the ink is tacky after a while, you know, when it should have been dry, you can press some of this foil, <clears throat> excuse me, right into it, and then it will not only remove the stick, but it will leave behind a fantastic foiled design, kind of marbleized usually. Um, and then if you have smaller bits that you want to foil, you know, those are options as well. So don't throw away those little pieces. You can totally use them. All right. We're going to run this through two times. I will not make you sit through the whole process. And then we will do our peel and reveal. Okay. This is the last layer. I'm really excited to see how this looks. Wow, look at that. That is cool. I'm digging it. It's super painterly looking. 
I really like it. I think it's really fun. Okay, so now we get to finish this card. So I pulled out some worn lipstick distress oxide. I was thinking about adding that to the edges. I think that that'll work pretty nicely. I wanted to use distress ink so that it was softer, but I don't have worn lipstick in in distress ink. So we're going to go in with the oxide. I've got my mini ink blending tool here and we don't have to worry if any of this gets onto our foiled images because it will resist it. We can just wipe it away. So like up here, it's super close. We can just wipe that away so that it doesn't get all over our fingers, which you know, it's going to happen to me anyway. Have you guys worked with the domed foam yet for these mini ink blending tools? I have not. I'm still working with the flat. And it's fine for me, um, but sometimes you get a bit of a harsh line that you have to kind of work out. But I haven't used it yet. I think that we're going to spritz some water onto here or splatter just to break up the heaviness of the oxide. See that, that harsh line? I gotta work that out. And I believe that the domed foams don't really allow that to happen. I'll get them eventually. But that's why I wanna add the splatter also because whatever lines I have, it'll break them up and make it look a little bit more interesting. Not that this isn't interesting already because it is, but just to add a little bit more. Okay, let me grab my cloth and just kind of wipe up those areas that I might have hit with the ink. That's good. <clears throat> I should also just wipe this up while we're at it. Okay, I've got some water in my spray bottle, but I'm going to unscrew it and just tap the nozzle. Now we're not working on watercolor paper, um, so I don't want to like spray it really heavy. This paper or cardstock, excuse me, does not tend to pill when I'm just splattering, so I don't have to worry too much. Some do, so you got to be careful. Test your cardstock before you start doing wet techniques on it. Really, it's good to test your cardstock whenever you're trying any type of new technique because sometimes you might not get the results that you're expecting for good or bad. I think that's really pretty. Okay, let that hang out for a second and then we'll sop up the, the wet. Okay, got a clean paper towel. really like that. Okay, time for our sentiment. I'm going to move these off to the side and we will get a sentiment on here. Here is my binder for my sentiments and colored images. I got this idea from my friend Amy at Amy's Wares and it's such a great solution for just storing the stuff that you have prepared. So looking at these sentiments, these are from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm not necessarily caring about the color at the moment. I'm just kind of picking the sentiment itself. I don't really like how much that covers. Maybe just a note. I think that's going to work. Yeah, not that color. We have some green in here. Yep, we do. Here we go. This is stamped. These are all stamped with Versafine Claire. It's kind of a cream color, but it might be okay. Is that pink too? I think it's too much pink. Here's one that's got white. Yeah, that's perfect. We're going to go with that. Put these away and move the book. It saves so much time to have a bunch of sentiments prepped and colored images too. Um, sometimes I just like to sit in color and not necessarily have a project in mind. I just, I just feel like breaking out the markers. So I'll do that and save them in that binder 
and then when I have a project I'm working on, I'll go through it and see if anything works. And a lot of times I'll find something that I completely forgot about and it just, it just works. Okay, so I can't leave that card base white. I just don't want to. You guys know that that's not something I do too often. So I have peeled paint distress ink here. It's not the perfect shade of green, but I think it'll be fine. I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. I love pink and green together. Reminds me of my sister and her man. They love pink and green. And whenever I do them together, especially if they're like bright neon shades of pink and green, it always makes me think of them. Okay. Loving this. I hope you guys are too. Okay, we're we're almost done. No need for any card bling or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with adding more, but I don't think it's necessary with all this gorgeous foil that we have on here. Get that as centered as possible while well, looking at it at an angle. <laughs> all right, folks. We are done. No, we're not done because it's totally crooked. There we go. That's better. Perfect. Love this. I'm going to have a heck of a time photographing it, but <laughs> it looks awesome. I think it's so cool. It's really very painterly. It's a totally different effect than if you were to just use the stencils with regular ink, but I, I really like it. And I love that this layering effect worked. And you don't have to do it with a layering stencil per se. Maybe you have, you know, I don't know, a bunch of geometric shapes and, you know, you have like a, a big hexagon and then a couple of small circles and you ink the hexagon and then you foil the circles on top of the hexagon and then throw some dots on top and foil them a different color. So don't think it has to be true layering stencils to get this kind of effect or do this technique. It doesn't have to be, but I thought it'd be fun to try it out and I'm super happy with it. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you learned a few things and that you'll come back next time when I have a new video. I'll be back real soon with one of those. Be well, stay safe, peace out.